Have you heard of the House of Repose? The Assassin's League? My contacts obtained a copy of a document in the archives. Contract for life. I am a massive Bioware fan. I've loved pretty much all of their games, ranging from the Knights of the Old Republic up to their most recent efforts. Mass Effect is one of my favourite games of all time, and that is huge praise. Why then was I worried about Dragon Age Inquisition? Well, I felt the first game was brilliant. I enjoyed the story, the gameplay, and felt at the time this was the beginning of another great saga in the Bioware universe. Unfortunately, the second didn't continue the great work done by the first game. It was far too simple and narrow in scope. It felt as though it was being made for a wider audience, but the final result ended in disappointment for loyal fans and didn't please newcomers either. Thankfully, Dragon Age Inquisition is awesome. I had no reason to worry about this game and it may be one of Bioware's finest games to date. You begin the game at the heart of a gigantic explosion with no idea how you got there. It's a simple yet effective start to the game. Your character has no memory of what has happened, which works well with you because you are discovering everything at the same pace as your character and there's quite a lot to discover. The game takes place during a civil war between the mages and the templars. It's a complicated war but simply put, the mages want their freedom whereas the templars want to keep them under control because mages are susceptible to being possessed by demon forces which live in the fade. The Fade plays a key role in all of the Dragon Age games, and more so in Inquisition. There are Fade Rifts, which look like green tears in the sky. These allow demons to cross into the world, and your character has the ability to close these rifts, which is how your journey will start. The role of the Inquisition is to rid the world of these rifts, and you are a key member of the Inquisition. Bioware has always been great at creating interesting characters, and they've not failed here. All of your teammates are well written, have interesting backstories which you'll be able to explore, but the best thing is that they not only have relationships with you, but they also speak to each other. Some of my favourite moments are when you're walking through the forest and your companions will discuss recent events or asking each other questions about their history. They can also be quite amusing. There, that's some good armour. Are you referring to me? Some high-ranking women wear ornamental crap with tits hammered into it. One good shot, and all that cleavage gets knocked right into the sternum. Real messy. Good on you for going practical. I aim to please. Leave something to the imagination, too. It's details like this that make you believe the world is existing. You have your own quest, but you feel as though the world is spinning whether you impact it or not. It's a good thing that your companions are such fun whilst exploring because you'll be doing a lot of it. The areas in this game are massive. They are not barren though. I rarely walk for 30 seconds without something catching my attention. You may want to collect herbs, skin animals, kill enemies, explore caves. There is always something new and interesting that kept me entertained and wanting to explore more. This is a game that is very hard to pick up and play for 5 or 10 minutes because you become so engrossed in the game. Hours can fly by without you noticing and credit must be given to Bioware for achieving this. As you do these tasks, you'll be rewarded with experience similar to most RPGs. You have your standard classes such as a rogue, warrior or mage, but each character will have their own unique skill tree, so it is well worth playing with different characters, one, to see their personalities and secondly, to see which abilities suit your combat style. Combat in this game is a blend of the previous two entries in the series. Most of the time you will play from a third person perspective in real time. You can switch between your characters on the fly and use their abilities. The AI will be controlling your other members and does a really good job of doing that. This combat style looks great and it's great for standard fights. When the battles get a bit more advanced, you are then able to use the tactical combat system. You can pause time and look upon the entire battlefield to plan your next move. You can give each character instructions and fast forward time at the press of a button. This technique does not have to be used, but there are puzzles where it comes in extremely handy when needing different characters to do different tasks. It's also a necessity when fighting the big bosses, when more tactical manoeuvres are needed. Some of the big bosses you face will of course be dragons. The dragons are terrifying and exciting. 
Sometimes, when you're exploring new areas, you'll just see a dragon flying overhead and every time it stops me in my tracks. At a safe distance, they are great to look upon. When you fight them, you will need to do a lot more than just stare at them. The dragon fights are extremely hard and so they should be. My first battle with the dragon I died within 30 seconds, but all this did was make me want to gain more experience and try again. When I finally defeated my first dragon, it really felt as though I'd accomplished something. I couldn't wait for the next one. Dragons are just one of many things to do in Dragon Age Inquisition. The game is massive. Bioware claims that to complete everything will take over 200 hours and I've got no reason to doubt them. There are hundreds of side quests and they feel connected to the main story. As part of the Inquisition, you are trying to gather more people towards your cause to defeat the demons entering the world. Every quest you complete gains you power and influence which unlocks new quests. You can also use these power points at the war room where you can give orders to your troops to complete tasks all across the world. It really gives you the sense that everything you are doing is for the greater cause and this encourages you to keep doing it. It is incredible that a game with such huge ambition is so well polished. I mean the graphics are beautiful, the frame rate never drops and the cutscenes are seamless. The only glitch I have seen is when the audio had a few seconds delay but this didn't last very long and that is it. It's unbelievable how a game so big can be so well polished, and it's an example for other games to follow suit. The only negative thing I have to say about Inquisition is the inventory management. It is always a tricky thing to get right when you're constantly picking up new loot and upgrading weapons, but I felt that Inquisition could have handled it a lot better. You cannot favourite items or compare items on the fly. It would have been great to have a Borderlands mechanic where it tells you the pros and cons of the items you find and you can just leave it if it was useless. It's a very small fault in the game, but I would spend 10 or 15 minutes having to reorganise my inventory every time I went out on an adventure. Dragon Age Inquisition is a joy to play and I am so glad I didn't skip it because of the mixed reaction to its predecessor. Having played the game for 100 plus hours, I cannot wait to play it for another 100. The game is gigantic, and yet so varied. I would recommend this game to everyone, and don't worry if you haven't played the previous games. You will not miss a thing, and this is a game that is not to be missed. I give Dragon Age Inquisition a 9 out of 10.